first hit by the pandemic, now a destructive fire. Sarah Costa explains how they may not be able to recover from this second blow. We will see Chick-fil-A inside a San Antonio airport soon. This noon, we have the latest on the back and forth saga and how the ball is now in Chick-fil-A's court. And we've got another hot day on the way. Temperatures in the 90s, but some rain chances later this week. We'll take a look at the forecast coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A man found in front of a West Side home with gunshot wounds. However, police say that's not where the bullets were fired. And Max Massey explains police have more questions than answers about this one this noon. This was the scene near the intersection of East Quill and Donaldson this morning. Multiple police vehicles filled the street. Crime scene tape blocked off portions of the road and officers lined the sidewalks. Investigators on the scene say they found the victim bleeding and he told them he was shot three times. It appears as though he was shot in the arm and in the side. He was able to speak. However, police say he was not cooperative, not telling officers information they needed to determine what had happened. Police found that man lying right in the middle of the road, but they say that there's no evidence that he was shot here. They say they didn't find a weapon, no shell casings, and none of the neighbors complained of gunfire. It's now leading investigators to believe he was shot somewhere else and then dumped here. The man was eventually put in an ambulance and taken to University Hospital. Police at the scene telling me he had non life threatening injuries and he is expected to recover. At last check, though, no suspect is in custody. This investigation seems like it is far from over. Authorities still working to figure out what exactly led to the gunfire, where it happened, and who pulled the trigger. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on a story that we've been tracking. Chick-fil-A will have the option to lease a space inside the San Antonio International Airport. That, according to the city of San Antonio. The city says the lease will be offered as part of a resolution to the FAA's investigation into the city's earlier decision to not allow the fast food chain in the airport. It says that it is not being forced, though, to offer that lease. A letter from the FAA to Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, though, says the city will offer the lease the next 45 days. It'll be up to Chick-fil-A to accept the lease agreement. The whole thing still needs to be approved by the city council. Paxton told Fox News on Sunday about this agreement. And you can read more about this right now on KSAT.com. There you can find the city's comments, a link to the attorney general's interview, as well as the letter sent to Ken Paxton from the Federal Aviation Administration on the subject. It's all right now, again, on KSAT.com. The contents of a West Side flower shop destroyed by a fire early this morning. This happened at Paradise Flowers and Pinatas in the 100 block of Castroville Road. Sarah Costa spoke with the business owners who say they may not have to, they may now have to close for good. It's the wake up call that no one wants to get that your business is on fire. We didn't expect this. At 3 o'clock in the morning, get a call, shop is on fire. It's, it's shocking. Mario Bojardo, one of the owners of Paradise Flowers and Piñatas, says they opened up the West Side Flower Shop a year and a half ago. First, he says they got hit with the pandemic. Now, all of their merchandise destroyed in the fire. He says it's devastating. Yeah, everything's gone. Nothing, nothing is, uh, there's nothing we could save. Nothing. Everything's gone. The San Antonio Fire Department says they were called out to the West Side business around 3 this morning. Initially, firefighters had a hard time getting into the building to knock out the fire because of the iron bars on all the windows. Once they were able to get in, the fire was quickly put out. Firefighters say the fire caused about $35,000 in damage and will need extensive remodeling repairs. Firefighters aren't sure exactly what caused the fire to start. Arson will be investigating. However, firefighters on scene said it might have been ignited by some faulty wires inside the building. As for the business owners, they aren't sure if they will be able to reopen in the near future. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Whether you get around by bus, car, or bike, transportation is something that affects all of us. And it's the topic of the first episode of our new season of digital program, KSAT Explains. 
When you think about mass transit, you probably think of buses, but over the past several years, there have been efforts to expand transportation offerings in San Antonio. Not all of these efforts have been successful either. In May of 2000, voters rejected a quarter cent sales tax increase intended to fund a light rail system. And more recently, plans for a modern streetcar project in downtown failed after pushback from the public. Former Mayor Henry Cisnero says those lessons have been learned thanks to these failures. We have had a history that tells us very clearly San Antonians don't want uh, streetcars, don't want light rail. They don't believe that that's necessary in our city. Um, so we're not going to do it. Coming up on the show, we're going to talk more about San Antonio's troubled mass transit history and look at some of the plans for improvement in the future on KSAT Explains. KSAT Explains transportation in SA will be available to stream on demand this Thursday. You can stream it on the KSAT TV app, available on most smart TV devices. It'll also be posted on KSAT.com. More than 1,000 people have now died due to COVID-19 in Bear County. That, according to the latest report from Metro Health. There was one new death and 23 previously unreported deaths that occurred between June 25th and August 27th. Metro Health also reporting 142 new cases of COVID-19 and an additional 1,575 backlogged cases. That brings our all-time total to 49,915. According to the numbers on the city's website, 246 patients remain in local hospitals with 108 in intensive care and 54 on ventilators. Since March, more than 40,000 people, though, have recovered locally. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center holding an emergency blood drive today. The center desperately needs donations to be able to meet the demands of local patients. The blood drive started at 10 o'clock this morning. It ends tonight at 6. It's taking place at Santico's Entertainment in Cibolo. That's off of I-35. All blood types are needed, but a spokesperson with STBTC says type O blood is especially scarce. You can visit and make an appointment to donate online at southtexasblood.org or you can call the phone number on your screen. It is 210-731-5590. All blood donations will be tested for COVID-19 antibodies. And that is not the only way you can give back and help others in our community. Some KSAC community events offer more options. We're teaming up with our KSAC community partners to help the San Antonio Food Bank for Hunger Action Month. This year, the food bank really needs the boost since people in our community have needed their help more often since that pandemic started. Every dollar you donate to the food bank helps provide seven meals. You can also donate food, including the food bank's most wanted items like peanut butter, beans, rice, and baby food. And there is still time to register for this year's Head for the Cure. The week of the virtual event, you can run, walk, or cycle a 5K in your neighborhood and snap a selfie during your activity. On race day, September 26, join Head for the Cure on Facebook or YouTube at 8 o'clock in the morning. Comment along on Facebook Live and post your selfie on the Facebook event page. We have a link to register and more information on all these events right now on ksatcommunity.com. Meantime, St. Mary's University announcing they will open its brand new eSports arena this Friday with a fundraising live stream to raise money for future black and Latino students. The virtual grand opening will begin at 11.45 a.m., followed by the 12-hour competitive gaming fundraiser to promote social justice and equality. St. Mary's said black Americans and Latinos are underrepresented in eSports, in part because of accessibility issues associated with the high costs of equipment and high-speed internet. The event will be live streamed on the eSports program's Twitch feed. Still to come this half hour, the Cowboys opened the season last night with a chance to close out the game with a victory. It didn't work out in my favor though, sorry. Another tropical storm gaining strength. The folks on the Gulf Coast are now in its path. How they're preparing for some potentially nasty weather after the break. Forecasters are telling us Sally has strengthened into a hurricane and may be reaching shore as early as tomorrow. As ABC's Elwin Lopez tells us, the storm is expected to bring dangerous weather conditions and the possibility of flooding to parts of Louisiana and Mississippi. 
Tropical Storm Sally gaining strength, slowly moving in, taking aim at the northern Gulf Coast. Millions of people in its path, Louisiana and Mississippi under a state of emergency, bracing for life-threatening storm surge. We have uh, really good reason to be very concerned about this storm, uh, particularly because it is going to be a very slow-moving storm. Today, a record number of storms churning in the Atlantic, including Hurricane Paulette. That storm's eye encircled the entire island of Bermuda. Sally already soaking the west coast of Florida, battering the Keys with torrential rain. A small glimpse of what she could bring to a region still reeling from Hurricane Laura's deadly impact. This storm's path similar to that of Hurricane Katrina 15 years ago. I mean, after Katrina, anything around here and any, any, anything on the water, you're going to take serious. You know, you can't take anything lightly. If Sally makes landfall here in Louisiana, it will be the fourth in just three weeks. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, New Orleans. What happened to that cool weather we were having? That was 85 at noon. Remember last week it was like 66 one day at noon. We warned you it would just be like one day. I know, but. <laughs> and boy, did you keep your word. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be hot again this afternoon. By the way, we, we're getting an updated track on Sally. We're going to update you coming up here in just a few minutes. First, let's check in on the aquifer. It's uh, down a tenth of a foot, 664.3, but still in a good spot. Our 10 day average is 661.1. We like to see that. In the pollen count, mold is moderate. We'll warn you, ragweed has jumped up. We're going into ragweed season on top of the mold. May cause some issues. We're going to talk about Sally. We're going to talk about the active tropics and our rain chances coming up. Never miss a storm. Streaming free on KSAT TV. I have relatives in Louisiana who telling us it's not going to be a direct hit, so that's good news. But it's, the way the it looks out there, they might as well keep those sandbags. They're going to need the sandbags no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it looks like the storm's going to move a little bit further east, but there's still going to be some good storm surge in Louisiana. So you, you got to watch out. It's marshland, right? So that water's still going to wash up close okay. to New Orleans, but uh, they're going to be watching it very closely. So that track means everything. We're going to talk more about Sally coming up in just a second. First, Look at the aquifer. It's up to 664.4 today. The 10 day average is at 661. So you may be asking, well, are we out of stage one restrictions? Not yet. Uh, the city typically or SAWS typically waits about 15 days after this process to see if we stay there above that stage one number. We'll let you know. It may come back down since there's not a whole lot of rain in the forecast, but we're moving in the right direction here with that number above 660, the aquifer. Uh, the radar doesn't show much today. We've got a couple showers down along I-35 closer to Laredo. You may see a few showers on the Rio Grande today, and then there's some pretty heavy rain south of Corpus. But for San Antonio, I think things stay pretty quiet. Big picture here across the state, most of the rain is out in far west Texas in the mountains there around Fort Davis and Marfa, and then down towards Brownsville this afternoon. Th there was a frontal battery that came through this morning. Didn't really notice it, right? Other than it picked up the northerly winds. We've got some gusty north winds now. That front's going to sort of wash out, but uh, it's still going to be hot today. It doesn't have a whole lot of bearing on our temperatures uh, this afternoon. Right now, we're sitting at 85 degrees, partly cloudy. Dew point is at 69. That, that number's still pretty high, too, even though we're getting a north wind at 12, gusting to 22 at the airport. A little bit of cloud cover out there, not much, and the temperatures Closing in on 90 degrees out there in Castroville, 85 Seguin, 88 in New Braunfels. You got 77 in one of the cool spots in Rock Springs, but up to 87 now in Del Rio and 88 in Catua. Futurecast shows that we could get a few showers and storms, mainly right along the coast today. Again, not much here in town. Then as we get into tomorrow, there's a little more of a chance that we can get an isolated shower. Still, the rain chances are probably 20% or lower. It's not until Wednesday that we can up the rain chances a bit, maybe more to a 30% chance for much of the area. And then Thursday, probably our best day, as it looks like we'll get some upper, well, upper level energy working in. Take a look at the tropics. This is pretty impressive. We got five named storms out there right now. That hasn't happened since the 70s. 
just incredibly active. We've got Sally, of course, which is a, a big concern. Paulette, which just passed over Bermuda. Uh, Renee, you got Teddy, and now newly formed at Vicky. Another area that we're watching out here just uh, west of Africa, and there's another little system uh, around South Texas. We're not going to worry about that one too much. Doesn't look like it will develop, but just incredibly active uh, this season. So now we can cross Vicky off the list. Next name would be Wilfred. If we go through Wilfred, we'll go into the Greek alphabet after that. Uh, we did that last in 2005, but uh, we've just had a lot of storms this year. It's been very active, and we've still got more time to go. There's a look at Sally, looking better and better each time we look at it. See the deeper thunderstorms right over the center now. Still no I, but we think this could be a Category 2 storm. Winds right now are at 90 miles per hour, gusting to 115. It's moving west-northwest at about 7. So the latest track takes it east of New Orleans. It'll be a close call there, but near Biloxi, and then you got Pensacola over here in Mobile. Uh, looks like this will bring some pretty significant storm surge, 7 to 11 feet in some cases. And then this will slowly move north and then move towards Atlanta as we get towards Friday. But it's going to dump a lot of heavy rain along the way, so that'll be a, a concern, some flooding. You see the really heavy numbers just east of New Orleans. We're talking 10 inches plus here and some very heavy rain for parts of Mississippi and Alabama. And there likely will be some flash flooding. Again, that storm surge will be an issue too, not to mention the winds. So we'll have to watch Sally next couple of days. Uh, no impact on us, obviously. Temperatures up around 91 degrees today. And then we'll drop down to uh, 82 tonight, partly cloudy skies around 10 o'clock. Those northerly winds will still be a bit breezy. 91 tomorrow, 20% chance rain, 30% chance Wednesday. I think our best shot now is probably Thursday, 40% chance of rain. Temperatures around 88. Uh, looks like it does clear out for the weekend. We'll get some drier air in here. Temperatures right around 90 Saturday and Sunday, guys. Oh, that hurricane is just a little too close for comfort. A little scary, you. yeah. A little scary, yeah. Thank you. All right, coming up, controversy in the Cowboys game. First, the play calling towards the end of the game, and then the refs call on the final drive. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The opening of the 2020 NFL season, debut for Mike McCarthy as the Cowboys' new head coach. Nice $5 billion stadium in L.A. Only one Cowboy scene kneeling during the national anthem. The rest standing, some with hands over heart, some without. Defensive lineman did not turn. Poe took a knee. Rams opening drive, game handoff, Michael Brown. And there you go, former Steel Knight has the first touchdown in SoFi Stadium. That's history making right there. One yard run, it's seven nothing. That leads to this second quarter, early. Cowboys on the move. Dak Prescott off the play action fake, finds rookie wide receiver C.D. Lamb over the middle. 17th overall pick, calls it for 33 yards. Two plays later, Prescott to Ezekiel Elliott. Busts his way over the goal line, 19 yard touchdown, tied at seven. Now Zeke celebrates showing off his stomach tattoo that says, Feed me. Mm. After the Rams tack on a pair of field goals, Dallas does just that. 17 seconds left. Elliott plunges over for the one yard score. Cowboys lead 14 13 at the break. Second half, Rams respond thanks to a pair of San Antonio natives. Third and three, Goff finds Jay Grad, Josh Reynolds along the near sideline. He's got it, spins away. 18 yards, one yard shy of the end zone. That sets up Brown. He gets the angle and a little leap and a one yard score. Brown has a career high 79 yards. Rams back in front 2013. Later in the third, Goff looking for more heavy rush. Bad pass. It is picked off by Judube Wazoo. 39 yard line. He tries to return it, but ends up going down at the 42. That leads to a Greg Zerline field goal, though. Dallas is only down three, 20 to 17. Head to the fourth quarter. Same score. Ball on the 11. Cowboys go for it on fourth and three. CD Lamb makes the catch, but he's tackled a yard short of the goal line. Turnover on downs. Dallas has one last chance. 27 seconds left. Prescott deep. Michael Gallup. He's got it. Huge gainer. But hold on, flag on the play. So I'll go by right there. The officials declared that Gallup pushed off offensive pass interference. Prescott has a pair of incompletions to end the game. Here's your final. Cowboys cannot pull that out on the road. 20 to 17, Rams get the victory. Dallas now 0 and 1. Prescott 266 yards passing, one TD, 30 yards rushing. Zeke 22 carries, 96 yards a TD passing, a TD rushing. So, Mike, why didn't you kick the field goal on fourth and three? 
You got to trust your players, and it's, I think especially the first time going out into a game. You know, I, I want our offensive guys to play wide open. We have we have that capability. So, I mean, I'll, I'll pull back when I feel like it's in the best interest of the team. I, I you know, I clearly recognize that it was a three point game, but you know, we, we still had we still had a lot of time left, and you know, I, I just felt that that would have been a huge momentum play for us. All right, we'll see what happens next week when the Cowboys host. The Atlanta Falcons, that one's at noon on Sunday in AT&T Stadium. So I think he's given his team a lot of confidence. They know that he's he's relying on them and he believes in them that they can do it. So next time they should have kicked the ball. Yeah. So much for that confidence. <laughs> we'll be right back. The popular candy peeps don't look for it in Halloween baskets or Christmas stockings this year. By the company behind the treat had to stop production earlier this year. That's coming up in your next half hour. And the census deadline's approaching pretty quick. Why it's so important to make sure you're counted. The pandemic has put a strain on many families financially, which can make managing the budget a bit trickier. After taking care of the bills, what should you do with any leftover money? Spend it or save it. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your size, Marilyn Moore's with strategies for your money and the best option for you. Now to the campaign trail where President Donald Trump is defending his record on the coronavirus. New poll numbers are out on how the public is viewing his handling of the pandemic amid accusations that he downplayed the danger. ABC's Alex Perche is in Washington with the latest on the president's response and that of his opponent. Today, President Trump is headed to California for a briefing on the wildfires raging on the West Coast. As another crisis, the coronavirus is taking center stage in his campaign. More scrutiny of the president's recorded interviews with The Washington Post's Bob Woodward over his handling of the pandemic, including an August 14th call described in this 60 Minutes interview. Nothing more could have been done. Nothing more could have been done. Nothing more could have been done. Does he remember what he told me back in February? about it's more deadly than the flu. I mean, it almost took my breath away. President Trump's critics pointing to his rally in Nevada just yesterday. Thousands packed indoors with few wearing masks. The president breaking the battleground state's own COVID-19 restrictions, limiting gatherings to 50 people. Its Democratic governor calling it reckless and selfish and threatening to find the company hosting the event. If the governor comes after you, which he shouldn't be doing, I'll be with you all the way. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Sir. The president's comments come as more than 194,000 Americans have now died from COVID-19. The virus claiming nearly a thousand lives a day. The Biden campaign pouncing, writing in a statement, every rally turned super spreader event is another reminder to Americans that Trump still refuses to take this pandemic seriously and still doesn't have a plan to stop it. And now Politico reporting Trump administration officials try to interfere with the CDC reports on COVID-19 as they push for the CDC to better align with President Trump's optimistic claims of the virus. A new ABC News Ipsos poll finds that 67 percent of Americans believe the president responded too slowly to the coronavirus, with 68 percent saying they trust what he says about the pandemic, either not so much or not at all. The president will no doubt face more questions on the pandemic during a town hall of undecided voters with ABC's chief anchor George Stephanopoulos in Pennsylvania tomorrow. Joe Biden has a similar event scheduled Thursday. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Scientists in London are beginning a small study comparing how two experimental COVID-19 vaccines might work when they are inhaled rather than injected. Researchers are studying a group of 30 people to test vaccines by the inhaling droplets. Experts say that would target their respiratory systems. The lead research doctor says there is evidence flu vaccines that are nasal sprays can protect people against influenza as well as help to reduce the transmission of the disease. He suggests that may be the case, the COVID-19. Yoshidi Sude has been elected as the new head of Japan's ruling party, virtually guaranteeing him parliamentary election as the country's next prime minister. This comes after the previous prime minister announced last month that he would resign due to health problems. Suga received 377 votes in the ruling Liberal Democratic Party election. He has been chief cabinet secretary in the Japanese government since 2012. 
Japan has faced the economic impacts of the pandemic. And Suga says that he will continue the policies of low interest rates and government spending. Police in Los Angeles are looking for a gunman who shot and wounded two Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies in an apparent ambush in their squad car. Surveillance video shows a gunman walking up to the car before opening fire on him. Protesters gathered outside the hospital where the injured deputies are being treated. The department announced a $100,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest. Both deputies are expected to recover. Now turning to those deadly wildfires on the West Coast, warnings of strong winds have added urgency to firefighters' efforts of containing the flames. As ABC's Will Carr reports, the alerts stretch from hard-hit southern Oregon all the way to northern California, and they will last through later this evening. Fires are raging up and down the West Coast. We're at the North Complex fire here in Northern California, where at least a dozen people have died and around 2,000 buildings and homes have either been damaged or destroyed, including this one. You can see all that's standing is this chimney. Everything else here has been destroyed. Along with these fires has come a toxic smoke. That's why I'm wearing my mask here. Some cities along the West Coast have the worst air quality in the world. The best way I would describe it is a choking smoke. Hopefully we're going to get a reprieve in the weather in the coming days and that should possibly help crews on the front lines and possibly move some of the smoke out of the area. In Oroville, California, Will Carr, ABC News. Rescuers are continuing their search for people missing since a deadly landslide struck three villages in Nepal. So far, 11 bodies have been pulled from the debris. But rescuers are looking for at least 15 more. They are believed to be buried by this landslide. However, current weather condition, conditions rather have made it difficult for researchers to continue this search. Back here at home, warm 85 already. But will it get warmer? than 85 already. It will. Yeah, we're thinking uh, 90s this afternoon. 90s? Please. Yeah, nice. we're back in the 90s. It was 95 yesterday, a little cooler today, hopefully. Uh, low 90s is what we're looking for. It's busy across the country, obviously. We got a lot going on out west in California with the, the fires. Still a bad situation there. And then you've got Sally that's moved, trying to move a little bit closer to the Gulf Coast this afternoon. We sit in between, in between where things aren't as bad, uh, not near as bad. We've just got some partly cloudy skies and uh, again, temperatures right around 85 degrees. You look across the country, some big time numbers there in Phoenix, 96 already. So they're going to see more heat and again, still more problems up and down the West Coast and some uh, heat for the Southeast too. 83 right now in Atlanta, 81 in Memphis. No big cold outbreak here, certainly not like last week. So the temperatures are pretty comfortable for most of the country. And for us today, we're looking for 91 in the high temperature, 89 in New Braunfels, 83 in Fredericksburg, 88 in Uvalde today. Our forecast calls for 91 by 5 o'clock, partly cloudy. We'll go 86 at 7 o'clock and then down to 82 by 10 o'clock. Northerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And they will be breezy from time to time. Uh, we'll have much more on the rest of your forecast. We'll talk about that seven day and another look at the tropics coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Concerns are circulating about possible consequences if there is an undercount in the 2020 census. The deadline set for September 30th. Organizations nationwide are working to boost response rates before it's too late. There are also legal battles underway over a series of last minute changes to the census. The census determines the number of representatives each state gets in Congress and funding at both the federal and state levels. That means money for schools and health care and infrastructure. 2020 giving us one more trick and one less treat. How the coronavirus pandemic is hitting a holiday staple. Coming up in your consumer news. Plus, Dancing with the Stars returns tonight. Look at who will be dancing the night away. Coming up in your spotlight news. Good news for fans of the app TikTok. It can stay on your phone for now. How it was able to get around threats of a ban after the break. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Hello everyone. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar. 
Facebook will now offer paid time off to employees who vote or volunteer as poll workers on Election Day. Now, the extra vacation time comes as part of a wider push by Facebook to register people to vote and even recruit poll workers, including from among their user base. The social media giant is launching a prompt at the top of news feeds on their site, encouraging people to sign up to work at the polls. Meanwhile, Instagram may soon begin charging users a small fee to put links in their captions. That, according to a new patent application spotted by The Verge. According to The Verge, if rolled out, a pop-up message would appear when a user attempts to add a URL to their caption, asking users to pay $2 to make that link go live. And just in the nick of time, the NFL and Dish Network agreeing to a new carriage agreement for NFL Network and NFL Red Zone to be restored on Dish TV and Sling TV. This announcement came on Sunday, just in time for the NFL's opening weekend. The programming was removed from Dish's services back in June due to contractual issues. And that's your Cheddar Business to Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The app TikTok is going to be allowed to continue running in the U.S. The company behind the popular app has chosen to partner up with Oracle. TikTok had to choose a new partner because of executive orders from the president. Those orders requiring TikTok to spin off from its Chinese parent company, ByteDance. The Trump administration threatened to ban TikTok otherwise, saying they were a national security risk. The tech giant Microsoft had put in an offer to buy TikTok, but it was rejected. Industry analysts say the sale would have been a big win, though, for Microsoft. The pandemic now affecting more holiday traditions. You won't be able to pick up holiday themed peeps in the stores until next year. Sorry, Justin. Just Born Quality Convections, the company that makes peeps, says it suspended production of its candy back in April to protect its employees' health. As a result, the company says the holiday themed marshmallow treats won't be back in stores until 2021. However, Valentine's Day peeps will be available this February. The company resumed limited production in May. Some people are pro peeps and Man. some people are anti peeps. It's, it's the flavors though. They come up with some pretty crazy flavors. You look, so you're then. pro peeps. Well, yeah, on some of them. All right, Justin. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> I'm okay that they're not coming out. I'm, I'm oh, okay too. Big fan. I think they're kind of creepy. They're very sweet. There's a lot of well, cool Yeah, they're just loaded with sugar. Yeah, it is. And more sugar. Seems like a lot. I don't know. Uh, 85 degrees so far today. 75 was the low this morning. The averages are 91 and 70, so we're above average. Feels like Mother Nature was just sort of teasing us last week with that cooler air. There's not a whole lot in the forecast, but we do have some rain chances that we're going to talk about. We'll detail that for you coming up. The Peeps controversy <laughs> continues. I never. Mike never. Osterhage is a. Yeah, he's thumbs down on the peeps. Thumbs down. All right. Um, <laughs> we are keeping an eye on uh, on this hurricane for a lot of reasons. Yep. It is strengthening. It is. Uh, it could become a category two. We're talking about Sally, of course. And now it looks like the track has changed a little bit. So we could be looking at Mobile, maybe Biloxi is uh, taking on some of the, the most direct hit from the storm. Or we're going to take a look at that in just a second. First, we've got to talk about what's going on here. We've got some showers and storms down there south of Corpus Christi. In fact, some pretty heavy rain that's associated with the tropical wave. That will stay well to our south today. We're also noticing some light returns out to the west. Possible we could see a couple of isolated showers from Del Rio down Eagle Pass and Laredo. Just not much here in San Antonio. We're really just looking at partly cloudy skies right now. Temperatures 85 degrees at the airports. We're on our way up. Uh, low 90s uh, will be in the forecast today. We are getting a good northerly breeze behind a frontal battery that moved through this morning. Didn't bring temperatures down, but it did bring some gusty winds with it. And uh, we'll see some gusts up around 20 miles per hour out of the north. 83 right now, Canyon Lake, 88, New Braunfels, 90 already in Castroville, 86. Hondo and one of the cool spots, Las Maples, checking in at 76. 90 in Pleasanton, 88 right now in Catua. Partly cloudy skies there. And there's a look at some of the wind gusts. Uh, gusting to about 22 here in town, gusting to 24 in Hondo. I think that's going to be pretty common through the afternoon gusts. 15, 20 miles per hour. Uh, high temperatures today, 91 is what we're shooting for here in San Antonio. Uh, 90 in Pleasanton, which we're already there. So actually, it'll be warmer than that. Probably mid 90s down there. Uh, it'll be hot just about anywhere you go. Uh, as far as the future cast is concerned, going forward, and this is looking at the upper level winds here. So you notice there's not a lot going on. We don't have the big dip in the jet stream. We do have a hurricane here. We have a little disturbance that's going to develop over Oklahoma and then sort of grow. 
a little trough moving through and it's going to probably peak and move right over top of us on Thursday. So that's why I think our best rain chances are probably Thursday afternoon. And even then we're talking about a 40% chance. It's not going to be a complete washout, but at least we have some more chances there in the forecast. Okay, let's talk about the tropics. We showed this earlier, but this is a pretty incredible here. We have five named storms out in the Atlantic right now. This is about as busy as it gets. Uh, we are just past the peak of hurricane season, but still you would expect it to be fairly active. We've got Sally, Hurricane Sally, Paulette, which moved over Bermuda, uh, Renee, which is falling apart, Teddy, which is going to take a turn to the north, but could become a major hurricane. And then Vicki is expected to weaken, just became a tropical storm, but should weaken back into a tropical depression. Then a couple of areas worth watching, although the one near Texas doesn't really show any signs that it will become something tropical. Uh, Sally is, of course, the big story right now. You can see the deep convection right over the center now. So this thing is becoming better organized and probably a little bit stronger. Winds are at 90 miles per hour, gusting to 115. It's moving west northwest about seven miles per hour. That's not terribly fast. So this is going to be a rainmaker. Uh, by tomorrow morning, we're talking about a Cat 2 storm just off the coast. Winds at 105 and then uh, moving north. Uh, we're, so winds over 100 miles per hour and then it will slowly drift north through parts of Mississippi and Alabama before ending up in Georgia, dropping heavy rain all along the way. There will be some significant storm surge with this too from New Orleans over to Biloxi and Pensacola. So another big problem for the Gulf Coast. What a season it has been in the Atlantic. For us, forecast calls for temperatures around 88 degrees by 2 o'clock, 91 your high temperature today. Then we'll drop down to about 82 by 10 o'clock, northerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. 20% chance of rain tomorrow, but a 30% chance Wednesday, 40% chance as we outlined on Thursday, and still some more chances on Friday. Looks like we'll get another weak frontal boundary coming through Saturday morning. That will clear out the rain once again, bring some uh, drier air in here. Temperatures will be right around 90 both Saturday and Sunday. Guys. Not bad at all. Nope. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Dancing with the Stars kicking off a new season tonight, and a contestant who's already proven to be a fan favorite is revealing her perfect song choice. And more and more theaters are opening their doors, welcoming back movie lovers. The latest box office numbers show fans already support their favorite stars. We'll have a look after the break. In your Spotlight News, Senator Ted Cruz wants the Department of Justice to investigate Netflix over the film Cuties. Cruz wants the DOJ to examine whether Netflix or the filmmakers broke federal laws against the production and distribution of child pornography. The senator's office says Cruz detailed his concerns in a letter to Attorney General Bill Barr, writing that the film sexualizes pre-adolescent girls. The Netflix spokesperson said in a statement that, quote, Cuties is a social commentary against the sexualization of young children. At the Bop Box this, this weekend, things are starting to pick up. And it took the top spot again. The time-twisting thriller made $6.7 million in its sophomore weekend, giving it nearly $30 million overall in North America and crossing $200 million worldwide. In second, the New Mutants, the X-Men spinoff, took in $2.1 million in its third weekend in the theaters. Russell Crowe and Unhinged brought in one and a half million dollars to remain in third place. The Broken Hearts Gallery debuted in fourth place. The romantic comedy earned one point one million dollars this weekend. And in fifth place, Bill and Ted faced the music with two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. And take a look at this, a first look photo at the upcoming reunion special for the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Will Smith shared his picture. Uh, with some of his hit series regulars. The cast taped the unscripted special, that had to be good, to celebrate the show's 30th anniversary. The reunion special being billed as a funny and heartfelt night full of music, dancing, and special surprise guests. It'll air on HBO Max sometime around Thanksgiving. I bet Justin will be tuning in. And Dancing with the Stars, speaking of tuning in, Dancing with the Stars returns tonight on ABC for its 29th season. And although the ballroom will look a little different this year due to the ongoing Corona's pandemic, the celebrities and their pro partners are ready to go. The series returns with a new host, supermodel and businesswoman Tyra Banks. And the lineup of celebrities includes a Grammy winner, a pro football legend and a big cat lover turned reality TV star Carol Baskin. And she's already chosen her first song. 
Eye of the Tiger is the perfect song for our opening dance because the phrase Eye of the Tiger means to be focused and to be confident. And I am confidently focusing on that mirror ball. For the show's first broadcast of the season, there will not be a viewing audience vote and only the judges will score the routines. Those scores will carry over and be combined with judges scores from week two, which also marks the first weekly live viewing audience vote of the season. My question is, can you wear two different kinds of animal print at the same time and still be fashionable? Can you dance? That's really While you're wearing all that? Bottom line. We, we might yes. find out tonight. Isn't, isn't that like wearing polka dot and plaid together? I, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> if you're Carol Baskin, anything, if you're Carol, yeah, absolutely. There you go. There you yeah. Go. yeah. <laughs> well, that's tonight, but you may have spent the weekend watching some football, and we have some easy recipes for DIY football treats with, of course, Adina Anderson. And tis the season for fantasy football teams, but how about putting together a Dancing with the Stars fantasy roster with your picks on who will take home the Mirror Ball trophy? We're going to reveal our choices on who gets eliminated each week, and you can play along from home too. Hey, well, since football is back, we want to know which NFL team do you think is going to win it all? And it's still early, but hey, you can make your prediction. Share your comments on social media. Tag us at SA Live at said, and you might see your answer a little bit later on in the show. Plus, getting your kids to eat their veggies, parents, boy, take note. We've got some clever tricks for sneaking them in. And too much heat can wreak havoc on your hair. So how about some cool curls without heating things up? Camera Shannon shares how. And, and hey, hold on, what are the pool noodles for? <laughs> just wait. I thought this up in our morning meeting right off the cuff. Wait do you see what we do with these things. SA Live is just a few minutes away. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs>